and welcome to another one. Tonight, we're out here to do some light trails because Lee, uh, he messaged me earlier in the week. He said that he'd found a potentially good spot for some light trails. And from up here, we're on like this uh, footbridge, this high-end footbridge, and it overlooks a roundabout. There's traffic coming from three angles and it has got some potential. So uh, whenever I post a picture of light trails, uh, I often get messages or comments asking about what gear I used or what settings I used. So I figured I would just make a video covering all of that one. Right, I'm trying to shield myself from the wind a bit because the wind is coming from right out my back and it's obviously we're elevated, so it's uh, it's a lot. Now, in terms of gear, you don't really need anything special. Pretty much any camera will do it, even a kit lens will do it because most of what you're doing is base ISO long exposures. The most important things that you need is an halfway decent tripod and either a remote trigger or like a two second timer that comes inside your camera. All right, so this is pretty much what we're looking at. Obviously, this isn't the final composition. I'm gonna to move to a better position and get these railings out of the way. But as you can see, there's you know, quite a lot of traffic buzzing around this roundabout. So it gives us the potential to get the light trails all the way around that roundabout and create some really cool effects. So there's the first couple of shots for you. Uh, let's just go through some settings real quick. It was dead simple. The ISO is at base, which on the GH5 is 200. The aperture was at about f7.1. Keep it nice and tight to stop those lights blooming and obviously to allow you to get that longer shutter speed. And the shutter speed in the cases that I've shot, it was anywhere between four and six seconds, depending on what light was entering the frame. You know, if you get the cars with the bright headlights coming into the frame, that's gonna throw your exposure off a little bit. So just be aware of what's coming into your frame and leaving your frame in terms of light, you know, to make sure you get the right kind of exposure for what you're looking for. All right, so while I've been having a look around, getting some shots around here. Obviously we're right by the river here and you've seen me photograph all of the industrial estates, um, which is kind of over in that direction on Bankside before. Well, this is the other side of the river. So a lot of them buildings from this side of the river obviously look completely different. So I figured that while we're here doing long exposures, why not? So I'm gonna set up a shot here. We've got the river, it bends right around there at like 90 degrees. It actually goes in like an S bend, but you can see the 90 degree bend. We've got a big old chimney stack thing up there big old building in the background and this whole site has been recently cleared so there, you know, there used to be all like pipe work and all kinds of silos and stuff like that but uh, that's all gone now so this area is actually pretty clean in terms of you know a photograph so I'm gonna set up over in this corner and I'm gonna talk you through that composition all right so this is the composition I'm thinking of um, of course this isn't what you're gonna see on the final image because I'm shooting micro four thirds so my image will be four three ratio as opposed to 16 by nine which is what you're seeing now so I'm gonna get a little bit more at the top and the bottom but this is the basic composition we've got the river coming in from this bottom corner and sweeping through guiding you through the image to our chimney which is pretty much right in the center we've got a nice reflection there in the water of the chimney and of the light then we've got this big old building over here on the left reflection of that as well and overall I think it's pretty cool you know I love that whole you know man versus nature kind of deal so that's what we're going for here now in terms of settings you can do this with pretty much any gear so it's the settings that matter so we're going to shoot this in almost exactly the same way as we shot the light trails so I'm going to be using base ISO which in my case is 200 I'm going to be using an aperture somewhere between f5.6 and f7.1 and in terms of shutter speed because we're not going to have the lights coming into the frame and potentially throwing off the exposure I'm going to start at five seconds and see how things look and then adjust the exposure accordingly and you'll see all of the settings on the final image right now So yeah, just to recap, 
doesn't matter what camera you're using, doesn't really matter what lens you're using, any sort of APS-C camera and a kit lens is going to be sufficient if you get the settings right. And in terms of the settings, keep your ISO at base, keep your aperture quite small, and then just use your shutter speed to determine how long those light trails are going to be or how much light you will need to allow into your shutter. You know, the most important thing, as I said right at the beginning, is the tripod and that two second timeout or remote shutter. Those things are going to ensure that you're going to get a very stable image. You know, the last thing you want on a long exposure is camera shake, so bear that in mind. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.